everybody. How's it going? Are you introducing the speakers, Jim? Yes, I, yes, I am. Are we ready for that? Yes. Okay, give me you, one second. Your timing was perfect. Okay, give me one second, please. Mr. Gallagher, you're on the line? Is he? Is Tom on the line? Yes. Okay, hold on one minute. Where is he? Oh, yes, he's, he's on there. <laughs> hey, Tommy, I, th I thought you were on the line here, aren't you? Yeah, he's just, he's muted. Well, okay. uh, unmute yourself. I think it's in the bottom left corner. I got there it. Go. There you go. Hold on one second. I'm going to get to it here. Here we go. I'm going to do the introduction right now, okay? Ready? All right, go. All right. I've known Tom for over 35 years now. He's owned the Pepsi franchise with his brother, and he was the director of the Chamber of Commerce. I was young and impressionable at that time, and he was such a positive influence on my life. I helped Tom campaign for mayor, not once, but twice. Tom went on to use that positive influence on his constituents. Tom and Lady Bird, as I affectionately refer to her, have raised three wonderful children and grandchildren. In spare time, he is the president of the Cortland, Ro a Cortland Community Foundation. Our own Evans Cortland Standard recently fin fin featured a in the community section on pa this past Saturday, December 19th, an uh, article called Doubly Blessed, written by Colin Spencer, and talks about Kirby Thompson and how they explain how the Cortland Foundation adds to local agency success. The Cortland County Foundation, a community foundation, supports agencies that are close to our hearts as Rotarians, such as the YM, the YW, the Historical Society, Lime Hollow, Cortland Free Library, to name a few. To today, Tom wears a hat of the Cortland Community Service Club. This is an organization that we partner with for the Corn Ducker Deer Breed. They support a number of these same agencies that we do. Tom is also a Rotarian, or I'm not sure a past Rotarian, but a quick tidbit, many of the members of the Cortland Community Service Club were or currently are members of our Cortland Rotary Club. Some of them we also invited on the meeting today and are on our Zoom. So I'd like to welcome Tom Gallagher, a warm Rotary welcome, and all the members of the Cortland Community Service Club. Let's give them our regular standing ovation. Well, thank you, Jim. Thank you for that nice introduction and welcome everybody. Uh, this is quite a privilege for me to be able to talk about the uh, Cortland Community Service Club. But Jim started out first by talking about the Cortland Community Foundation. And I will tell you just as a short recap, we just finished our uh, ninth philanthropy day and we started out nine years ago and put up thirty thousand dollars for a match and we didn't think that was enough for the community so we put the thirty thousand dollars into a prize fund and in the last nine years we have raised over three million dollars and that money goes all directly back to all the organizations that participate in philanthropy day we do not take a dime so this year we set another record which was very surprising because I thought for sure that it was gonna be way down because of all the fundraising that was going on for COVID. We raised $380,000 this year. And with the 30,000 we put in, that's $411,000. And we can thank all the organizations for all the support they gave us during this whole thing. It really helped a lot of the not-for-profits because they were having bad years. So that's just a short recap on the uh, Community Foundation. And I'm going to give a little history of the Cortland Community Service Club. It started out in the 1900s as the Wise Men's Club. It was an organization affiliated to support the uh, YMCA. It was a very, very formal organization back then. They had black tie affairs, and major dances, and fundraisers. And the Wise Men's Club 
kind of went informal, if I could say that. And then uh, our club, I've been in the club for 55 years. And uh, all the funds that were raised were given to the Y for all their youth programs. And during the summer, they shut down for two weeks, and the Wise Men's Club would go in for two weeks, clean the pool, paint the pool, fix the lockers, fix anything that needed to be done. And then anything that they needed, we funded. All our money that we raised went directly back to the Y. We met every Monday night at the Y. We hired a cook and waitresses. And we had a meal every single Monday night. Then after we got done, we played volleyball and then retired to our favorite watering hole, where all the good ideas came from. In fact, one of them was, as you know, Cortland's kind of a small community, and they didn't have a small or they didn't have a town drunk. So we all took turns. Some of the projects that we did uh, to make money for the Y is the first thing we started out with was a Christmas tree program. We actually put the Christmas trees on a wagon and went door to door selling Christmas trees. And it turned out to be a pretty good thing. So we set a lot up at the Y. And from there, we established that and stopped the door to door because more people were coming to the Y. Some of the other programs that we started, if you can remember back, was the Canoe Classic. We started it the first year from Portland to Marathon, and that turned out to be uh, overwhelming because it was such a long trip. And then we changed it from Truxton to Cortland, and it turned out to be a good, good thing. A couple of the other things that we did, we started the Bonton Roulet, which is still going on today. So actually, what happened to the Wise Men's Club? Well, through a misunderstanding with the trustees in the Wise Men's Club, we were asked to leave the Y. They didn't really need our help anymore, I guess. So the group of guys got together and said, you know what, we got such a good group of guys, we need to continue. Let's think of something to do. So we became the Cortland Community Service Club. And in 1995, well, actually it was 1994, Bob Swartout, my adopted brother and best friend, came up with the idea of the Corn Ducky Derby. So now we have, we had about 20 some members back then. Now we have about 43 members. And they are from various backgrounds. And I'm going to tell you this because it's important. I mean, we've got guys that are salespeople, farmers, veterinarians, judges, laborers, media people, real estate, veterans, firemen, healthcare workers. Financial professionals. Consider, pardon me? Financial professionals. I have financial too. Well, I should have said et cetera. We got teachers and everything too. We still meet every Monday night and we still do things for the community. So that leads me to the uh, Corn Ducky Derby. We started out, this is our 25th year. This is gonna be our silver anniversary in 2021. We have raised 331,000, almost $332,000. When we first started out, we were all selling the tickets from the club. Well, it got to the point that we didn't think we were doing enough, so we went to the not-for-profits and the youth organizations and asked them to sell tickets. They started doing a pretty good job for us. Well, the money that we raised, we were going to give back to the not-for-profits anyway. So we said, why don't we give 50% of the cost of the tickets back to the organizations and let them go after it? Well, that turned out to be a great thing. Those not-for-profit groups so far have gotten $231,000 from the club. We are now selling approximately 7,000 tickets a year. 
we thought we were going to have a bad year this year because of the COVID, but everybody stepped up. And I need to give credit to the Rotary Club, too, because you're one of our big, biggest sellers. And I want to thank you for that, and so does the club. So all of these organizations uh, raised over $100,000 just selling tickets from 2005 through 2019, which is a pretty good thing. So this year, we're going to do a little something different. As you know, we have the big ducks that we pass around to each organization to display. This year, we are going to have a contest with the high schools. We've already gotten the okay from the schools. They're going to have an art contest decorating the ducks and we're going to be giving out prizes to the schools that have the best ducks. We're going to have a team that's going to work together with the schools and come up with some real good ideas. So I'm going to conclude there and let people ask some questions because I think you probably want to know more. And Tom Dumas is also on and he can help us through this whole thing. Yeah, we see a couple other people uh, from the club, Dicey. Uh, uh, Dougie Gilbert is in the club, yep. who's our chairperson, yeah, right? Dougie is, the, Dougie is the chairman of the uh, Corn Ducky Derby. Welcome, Dougie. And Dumas, of course, we all know Tom. He's been a, he's a past member of our club. And it's like I said, a number of the members in our club are Rotarians or past Rotarians. I'd say close to half. <clears throat> yeah, what, I have a question, Doug. What What are the plans for this year? Are we thinking about going back to the same location, or are we going to have a backup in case we're in the same situation as we were last year? Well, Jim, we we hope to be back on the uh, Dry Creek. That has proven to be uh, a excellent location a venue for spectators to watch the event. And uh, it's, most years it's easy to control the water. I mean, we don't control the water, but it's easy to put our ducks in the water and get them out. We've had one, we had one bad year where we lost a lot of ducks due to high water, but year in, year out, the Dry Creek is the best location. And uh, we have a backup plan that we, obviously we used it this year with a uh, portable pond provided by the Cortland City Fire Department. So well, that's the that's way we plan on going. That's also an interesting story. We had that bath brought over from the fire department and they got it all hooked up and filled it up with water and it leaked. <laughs> <laughs> 2020. Yeah. You guys own the or do you rent them? I didn't hear you. We own the ducks or do you rent them? We, we own 7,000 ducks. Yeah. We, we started we rented out them. renting, we started out renting the ducks, but then we found out that we better start buying them because it was getting way too expensive. And everything was good until the year that Dougie told you that we lost all the ducks. We lost about 2,500 ducks. They ended up down the down around the Delaware River someplace. Any other questions? I can't well, believe I there is any. You give out prize yeah. money. Um, yes. Do people just give it back to the community foundation or is it, uh, do they take it? This is not from the community foundation. This is from the service club. We need to separate that. Uh, a couple of people have given back. Um, I can't remember how many, maybe Tom remembers. Most, most of the folks uh, have kept their money that except for like Tom just said, I believe last, uh, was it last year? Two years ago, I guess maybe. Uh, one of the folks that won gave all the money to the Homer Little League uh, baseball diamond, I think, group. Right. And many of the people who have won the uh, fifty to a hundred dollar uh, prizes have given their money back to the to the club. That's what I thought. That's great. That's great. Uh, this questions? year, the twenty fifth anniversary, we're looking for sponsors. 
Um, how many sponsors do we have and are we still looking, asking for sponsors? Right, right now we have about 14 sponsors, but we're still looking for more because we, uh, we ended up making another banner this year and we put it up in Homer. And if things keep going the way they are, we hope we're going to be able to do it in Marathon too. And let me just say, I, I, I'm going to be a new sponsor, so I know you guys got me down on that. But what a difference that's made to the production of, of the overall outcome of the race, because basically between the sponsors that we have now and the club members who buy tickets, we're pretty much in the money after that. So that really helps a lot. So all that money that we really sell, all the other tickets we sell really goes to profit because the club itself, just like we used to, I'll buy the tickets. Now that we have other people selling the tickets between the sponsorship and the club members buying tickets, we're pretty close to break even on the prizes. So that means everything that our clubs does, the Cortland Rotary Club, really goes to giving away, giving away. It's all, all going to money that's given away. And what a great job this organization's did. I'm sure you've seen that sheet we've given out with all the different organizations, the amounts of money we've given out there. I don't think there's an organization in town, in the county, actually in the state, that's done with this little, little if I say little organization is done. We're, we're really well, fortunate. Sponsorship's $200. So if any fellow Rotarians uh, want to be a sponsor, uh, please let Jim or myself or Jim Nichols or Tom Gallagher or Tom Loomis know. Or me, I'm president. I'll, I'll sponsor. You know, what the heck? <laughs> $200. Yeah, what the heck? All right, Dougie, mark that down. <laughs> David, <laughs> thank you, too, for Tanner Ibbotson wants to sponsor this year. Got it. I'm Mayflower Capital, by the way. That's, that's my firm. Dumi, did you write that down? I will. Thank you. <laughs> okay, anything else? Any other questions? Yeah, I'd just give a shout out to uh, Doug and Tom and Tom Gallagher for all the work they do. I mean, they put a lot of time in this and uh, really carries the club, and we greatly appreciate that. <laughs> Yeah, it's been a little difficult when you can't meet and talk about it, but uh, Dougie's been real good about bringing five or six of us together to uh, get things going for this year. And uh, again, it's all for the not-for-profits. In any given year, we give out approximately $20,000 to the youth organizations in the community outside of the 50% that we give for the ticket. Tom, probably one of the uh, biggest changes uh, has occurred be, uh, from our younger members, and I, and I pick on that because you and I and a few others that are not quite as young uh, have came up with the ideas. And Chris Ryan, I have to give, give him a little shout out, came up with the idea of asking the community clubs and not-for-profits uh, to sell duck tickets. Uh, and uh, that has been probably the biggest change, but... Uh, with that, uh, just a, a quick shout that we could use a few younger members in our group to kind of help uh, spread out our age a little bit, a little more diversity. So if anybody's out there would like to kind of consider being a member of the community club, uh, please give us a little shout and, and join us. Tom, you should be speaking to the breakfast club, not the noon club. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, Boris, I hear you. <laughs> How do Boris, are you saying, are you, saying you guys are older than us? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Maybe. Might be equal. <laughs> how, how do the organizations in the community find you, and is there a specific time of year that you request, that they put in requests for grants, or do you just accept them as they come in? We have a form that uh, we have them fill out. And then we have an allocation committee within the club that uh, awards the things. And you can actually get a hold of Tom Dumas. And they okay. can also go, uh, go to our website, uh, website. And, uh, and find a form on there and, and uh, seek a grant. Uh, so we're at that process right now of, of giving out what we've earned this year. Okay. And just another thing, uh, on the advertising part of it, we have 
gotten to the point where we are doing in kind and a lot of the uh, advertisers are doing things for us. We're giving out X amount of tickets to anybody that wants to do anything for us as far as advertising. If you do $100 worth of advertising for us, we'll give you $50 worth of tickets. And you can sell them, give them away, or fill them out for yourself. Okay. Any other questions? Well, Harriet, thank you very much and to the club for letting us come on and uh, talk about this because uh, obviously we want to get it out to the public as much as possible. Oh, that's great. So and your, you, your you. uh, rotary mug will be in my uh, mailbox and my, uh, Jim Nichols will pick it up and get it to you. So you, you have okay. to, you know, stay on top of him. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> you can't. Uh, you want to turn the, the, 